Greetings everyone, I am Thomas the Retro Nerd, reviewing the games good or bad. This is one of those big videos I wanted to do for a while, because this will be my tribute video to one James Eugene Carey. And what can I say about Jim Carey that no one had said about him? Well, the biggest thing I can say is, he is my favorite comedian of all time. I love his sense of humor, his comedic timing, his rubbery facial expressions, and his movies have a huge impact in the world of entertainment. Oh, I read the Deadwood. No! However, that didn't start that way. His career started back in the 80s with my dude of success. That is until he was discovered by Keenan Ivory Wayans and was casted as the token white guy in the Fox sketch comedy series In Living Color. The Wayans family made the right choice. This showed off Carrie's talent to the world and everyone loved him. Oh my gosh, I hope he's okay! <laughs> Never better! The show had a good run lasting five seasons, but that's just the start. 1994 was the year when Jim Carrey dominated the movie scene. Ace Ventura and Dumb and Dumber were released that year, but he also did a summer blockbuster, which is the subject of today's review. The Mask started out as a miniseries of comics in 1989 published by Dark Horse Comics. It is one of the darkest and most violent series of stories ever printed on paper. The objective of the series is whoever wears this mysterious emerald colored mask, the wearer becomes the titular mask, or better known as the Big Head Killer, doing some wild and crazy cartoonish antics as a tribute to the style of Tex Avery. Well, since Sean is a comic expert, what do you think of it? Wait, what? Huh? Oh, I didn't realize this, this uh, thing was on. Uh, what's up? Um, oh yeah, uh, my thoughts on this, um, I gotta say, a pretty fucking good read. I gotta, I gotta get myself one of these, actually. I mean, come on, look at the fucking artwork here. Man, they should really make this into a TV series. It would actually work. If you're into this kind of stuff, it's a worthy read. When New Line Cinema got the rights to make a movie based on the comics, they decided to tone down the violence, make it more comedic, and make it a vehicle film for Jim Carrey to star in. Surprisingly, it worked. The film begins with two scuba divers discovering a chest under the river of Edge City that holds the titular mask. Carrey plays the founder of the mask, Stanley Ipkiss, a mild-mannered bank clerk who was unlucky and bullied. The mechanics trashed his car, his best friend left him behind, and even his landlord takes a piss at him. Well, that's what you are, Ipkiss. I paid nothing. The night he finds the mask and brings it back to his apartment, he puts it on which transforms him into the being known as the mask. With these new powers, he mostly uses them for his own pleasures like revenge and partying hard, though he did say he wanted to be a superhero. On the villain side, Dorian Tyrell, played by Peter Green, is a rogue mafia officer who is destined to outthrow his superior. After confronting Ipkiss and taking the mask for himself, that's where things get worse. Okay, there are a lot of scenes from this movie that are adapted from the comics, but I don't want to set things off for my sensitive viewers. I also don't want to spoil some of the major parts of this movie because they are too memorable for those who didn't watch this. And that is blasphemy! Plus, the cast did a fantastic job with this movie. Sure, this movie was made for Jim Carrey as the lead. Green also did awesome as Tyrell. And Peter Riker was also great as Lieutenant Calloway, another character from the comics. There was also Richard Jenny, Amy Yazbek, Ben Stein, Jim Dugan, the late Reg E. Cathy, and even the female lead Tina Carlisle, played by Cameron Diaz in her feature film debut. Overall, this is a classic film and I highly recommend it for its funny script and its amazing special effects that were nominated for an Academy Award, but lost to Forrest Gump. That I'm not upset about. Of course the effects are awesome! This is industrial light and magic after all! Now then, with the success of the film, it expanded further into a franchise. It had an animated series starring Rob Paulson. Awesome choice, by the way. I also read there was a toy line that mixed both the movie and the animated series for some reason. I'm just surprised that this toy line is a thing. I got this at a convention over a weekend, and that face looked really, really, really creepy. The later comic stories were toned down after the movie's release, and one of them was indeed a video game on the Super Nintendo. So when it comes to movie tie-in games, a lot of companies like to rush production, cut corners or save money, and try to push the release at the same time as the movie to capitalize it. As for The Mask, I think it's a whole different story. This game was made by Black Pearl Software and was released on October 29, 1995, one year after the film's release. So I guess that Black Pearl took their time with this one. Well, it's too bad this game failed. If you go on eBay to find a copy, sellers will demand outrageous prices. Jeez. But... Did Black Pearl deliver something good? 
Well, let's take a look. By the way, do you like my new setup? Yeah. I got a brand new TV since my old one died, so I had no choice but to replace it. It's smaller than the old one, but I can work with it. Plus, I got a brand new stand, which kind of matches the old one. Consistency, right? Anyway, let's play the mask. After booting up the game, we get the opening cutscene that follows the movie, where Loki's mask is rising from the River of Edge City, with a first-person view of Stanley putting it on, turning him into the title screen. Bravo! Off to a fantastic start. The plot of the game is exactly like the movie, where Ipkiss first wore the mask in his apartment, doing his crazy antics around Edge City, and goes all the way to where he stops Dorian Tyrell at the Coco Bongo. You punch, smash, and swirl around a level of enemies to reach the boss battle at the end. Looking at the options menu, you can study the controls right away. The D-pad moves Ipkiss around, B to jump, Y to punch, hold R to run, hold L to sneak around, and you also have some special mask powers in this game, pressing X to use the mallet, and A to use the tornado attack. By holding up on the D-pad, you can use more powerful mask powers like a high jump, the Aruga horn, and the massive amount of guns, just like the movie. Holding both shoulder buttons causes Stanley to zip around. Cool. You use these abilities to navigate through these levels, punching the shit out of the thugs along with smashing rogue clocks. Again, another clever nod to one scene. Sneeze. Unlike the movie, you'll encounter more of these annoying clocks and they'll need three whacks from the mallet to destroy them. The mass powers you use throughout the game uses up energy indicated by the meter on the bottom. When you see these M icons, they can refill your mass power. There are also some green hearts that refill your health when you take heavy damage on some occasions. Losing all your health will cause Stanley to rip the mask off his face, which counts as losing a life. However, if you find a yellow hat, it counts as a checkpoint, so when you die, you can respond there instead of the beginning. Finding Loki's mask around the levels counts as an extra life, which is neat. Oh, and there's also some money you can collect for no other purpose but to get a high score. Well, finally got the positives out of the way. Now it's time to talk about the major flaws with this game. The controls and concept are simple to read, but the game has already exposed its ugly face with the level design and enemy placements. First off, the level designs. They act like mazes. Here's an example. At the apartment complex, there are cracks on the floor. How are you supposed to know right away to use a mallet to smash the floor? You have to figure that out on your own. Another thing you have to figure out is this. You can travel through air vents in this game. Too bad when I first played this, I wouldn't figure it out. Also, there are some areas with lots of trinkets that have lots of invisible barriers. Can you navigate through these? The enemies are placed in a way to piss you off. For example, this fat bald geezer that throws an endless amount of attacking cats at you. You have to sneak past him so you don't trigger him. Failing to do so, he'll keep tossing the angry cats until you leave. Oh, this is what I call good enemy placement. I'm trying to bounce back up to proceed, but the fat ass keeps tossing the cats at the perfect time to cause knockback and fall down again. Oh, come on! Some enemies are pushovers, some are bitches, others instantly attack you with no warning, and. Is that Milo? Wearing Loki's mask? This makes zero sense in context. Loki's powers were banished into one mask. One! Sure, Milo did wear the mask during the climax, but both of them wearing it at the same time is beyond my comprehension. The enemies suck, but the boss battles are even worse. Sure, we do get Mrs. Peenman like in the movie. But then there are some bosses that had nothing to do with the movie. Oh, give me a big fat break! You know, I've noticed a pattern a lot with these movie tie-in games where the developers added random bosses that follow jack shit. One example is this one generic muscle man boss that looks like roadkill. This is where the mass powers come in handy. Use the right combination and wear them until they go down. The biggest flaw with the boss battles is that they don't have a health meter, unlike you. The worst part about it is that if you die during the boss battle, their health resets and that just pisses me off because I have to do everything all over again. Because of this, I couldn't beat it. I got as far as level four out of the six until I lost all my lives. 
And the cherry on top of the shit Sunday, no continues. You are brown bread. You are done. I'm serious here. The level four boss is utter shit. It keeps jumping all over the place, flinging its garbage at me, and no breathing room to get close to attack. I don't know the right pattern, but I just don't have the patience to care. Damn. Damn it! Oh, come on! Stop it! Dude, are you okay? I'm kicking my ass, do you know? It might help, but I don't think it'll do much. <laughs> uh, I just about had it with this game. While reading up on the game, the final level does go back to following the movie with Stanley heading to the Coco Bongo to save Tina from Dorian Tyrell, who is also wearing Loki's mask! It doesn't work that way! Epkins and Tyrell cannot wear the same mask at the same time! That's it. I'm moving on to the final verdict. The mask on the Super Nintendo had some positive aspects going for it, like the character animation for Stanley, the idol animation where he goes Cuban Pete, and the music is fucking catchy! Yet another pattern I noticed. No kidding, the music sounds like it belongs to the movie. to Phil Crescenzo who composed the music for this game. However, the level design sucked for not only being mazes, but also the cheap enemy placements being either garbage or just ganging up on me for the sake of flipping the bird. Yeah, and the boss battles suck, especially when you lose your mask powers or wait for it to charge. Overall, even if you're a mega fan of the movie, I would say be cautious while playing this. However, I'd rather watch Son of the Mask than to play that game again. What the what? Yeah, I fucking said it. I would rather watch Son of the Mask. I know that sounds blasphemy, but I don't care. This movie may felt unnecessary, but I remember getting some entertainment out of it when I was a kid. And in fact, compared to it when I played the game. Also, I'm being real here. I like Jamie Kennedy, but he is no Jim Carrey. Well, that about does it for this review. I'm Thomas the Retro Nerd wearing Loki's mask. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you guys in the next review. I don't want to point out the obvious, but uh, I think you guys just arrived at a pretty bad time. What are you guys complaining about? Don't put that mask on. It's going to make you crazy, man. Let him get crazy. He's already Please. crazy enough. Let him. Oh, for Pete's sake. Come on, guys. You know Loki is a night god, which means it only works at night. <sighs> Even Sean knows this! Yeah. I mean, seriously, come on, it's broad daylight outside! Don't you have a clue about that? Oh, yeah. I can't believe what I have to deal with here. Alright, take care. Bye bye then. Hey, losers! Hey! Machuco! Just my friends too.